must be thinking, oh no, not another desk setup with sit stand desk and hack physical pools chair. If you're looking for an alternative desk setup that doesn't feature any of the usual sit stand desk setup you see on YouTube, then you're in the right place. Now, I'm not just saying the sit stand desks, the standing mats, and the ergonomic chairs. In fact, I have purchased some of them myself because that's what everyone on YouTube is using, and I just assume that it will work for me. Spoiler alert, it did not. So after rounds of iteration, moving things around, taking things apart, I finally arrived at my perfect desk setup. Just to give you a bit of a background, I am a beauty editor with Harper's Bazaar Singapore, and I work mostly from home, so this setup has to be conducive for writing and researching. It is also where I edit my videos and write my scripts for YouTube. I also shoot most of my YouTube videos from home, so it would be great if the desk setup forms a clean but interesting background for my YouTube videos like what you see at the back over here. The heart and soul of any desk setup is of course the desk and the chair. But let's talk about the desk first. There are so many brands out there that offer sit-stand desk options, and since many YouTubers picked a sit-stand desk for their setups, I just felt that it was a logical and healthy thing for me to do as well. I picked a desk from Selka, a small Finnish company which produces really small sit-stand desks for tiny apartments. I like that it has a single leg and the option to put wheels on it so it's easy for me to move it around. Unfortunately, the surface area of the desk was so small I found it hard to keep my desk clutter-free. And I constantly find myself running out of space to do simple things like writing a notebook or flipping through a magazine. I also found that I wasn't really making use of its adjustable height, having it in the sitting height most of the time because it was just more convenient to get out of the chair and walk around the apartment to get some movements instead of you know working while standing up. Now to be fair, my Celta desk was the hydraulic one and not the electronic one so adjusting the height can be quite a chore when you can't adjust at the rate you want the desk to go up and down and things can get a little bit shaky sometimes because of that and it just wasn't ideal for what I wanted. So after deliberating, I found that a nesting desk setup was probably a better choice for me. I wasn't making use of the sit-stand functions anyway and I could use more desk space and this setup allows me to stow things away when I'm not using them and keep the desktop relatively clean. I bought this desk from Taobao and I'm not going to recommend this seller because they messed up my order big time. When the package arrived, only two of the tabletops arrived with just one set of legs. Uh, they told me that the legs were actually shipped together with everything else, but it ended up being a week late. And when it did arrive, I was disappointed to find that the wheels and the screws were missing, and then I had to contact the seller to ship over the wheels and the screws so that I could finally get all the parts I needed. But it's finally here. Uh, the desk measures 1 meter by 40 centimeter, which is a pretty narrow desk. But once I pull out the nesting desk from underneath, I essentially double my desk surface. So now I'm free to put my keyboard on it so that I am at a comfortable distance away from the monitor. I could also clear the nesting table to do crafting like I did in my last video. Uh, link up here if you haven't watched it. I can also wheel this out so it's facing the camera while the wall forms my background. It can also serve as a surface for me to shoot products and thumbnails when I need to. And after all that is done, I can just wheel the nesting desk underneath the main desk to keep the footprint small. Uh, my chair also fits comfortably under the desk so everything just stays clean and out of the way. Again, because this nesting desk is available on Taobao which many of you may not have access to, there is actually an alternative way you can create this with IKEA furniture. You could conceivably replicate this nesting desk idea with the right tabletop size for your space. And all you have to do is just use the Olaf adjustable legs and the krill leg with casters. I actually saw this at my local IKEA and someone else has already thought of doing this. Let me just post a picture of what I saw at the IKEA the other day. And you could definitely replicate this with the right legs and tabletop. My chair is the Alevial from IKEA. Again, it is not the chair that most YouTubers recommend, but I learned that going with what's trendy is not the right way. When I first tried to put together a home office setup, I actually purchased the Hack Capisco Pool Chair. And after a few months of using it, I developed problems in my hip. My joint on the left side became misaligned with very limited mobility and I spent thousands of dollars at a chiropractor to reverse its effects. I'm not saying that the chair is terrible, but it was awful for me because of my sitting habits. I tend to move around a lot and I like crossing my legs. I ended up putting a lot of pressure on my left hip while doing so. Um, normally that would be fine on most chairs because, you know, there is ample cushioning. But for the Hack Capisco chair, it has a rounded sitting surface to open up the hips while you sit. And I ended up with a misaligned hip because I was just putting so much pressure on my left side. 
I ended up buying a chair with a thick cushion that has wide and deep seats so that I'm able to cross my legs comfortably while I'm at my chair. So with my sitting posture and my tendency to move around and cross my legs, it's really more feasible for me to have a chair that has a thick cushion and a wide and deep seat so that I'm able to cross my legs comfortably while I'm at my desk. This actually brings me to the point of why I'm making this video. I want to emphasize that just because a certain desk or chair is popular on YouTube doesn't mean that it's the right one for you. This video offers an alternative desk setup, something that goes away from the usual sit-stand desk and ergonomic chair, so you can be more aware of how to build a desk setup that actually works for you. An ergonomic chair may promote better posture, but if you're not sitting the way it's intended or designed to be, you're not going to reap its benefits and may even wreck your posture like what it did for me. Continuing with the tour, I am using the Apple MacBook Pro with M1 Pro chip. It's got a 16GB memory and 1TB of storage space. Since I use just one screen, I decided to mount it on the back of my Apple Studio display instead of putting it on a laptop stand on the top of my desk. That way, I can keep my desktop relatively clutter-free. In this case, I'm using the Elago Pro Hanger, which allows you to mount your laptop to the back of your display. It has rubber finishings and a rubber cushion for you to stick on your display so it doesn't scratch your MacBook Pro. I absolutely love the Studio Display. I used to have a Thunderbolt display and I liked that it had all the cables I needed to connect to a MacBook Pro. And I was stoked that they finally released a new monitor that didn't cost me another Chanel 22 bag. With the Studio Display, it's just one cable to transfer data and to charge your MacBook Pro. And it keeps the whole desk setup looking very minimal with very, very few wires. Over the Studio Display, I have a Basus monitor light bar which lights up my work area. I don't particularly have any positive or negative feelings about it. It's a light, it has three color settings. It doesn't flicker and it works, that's good enough for me. On top of my desk is a monitor stand which spans most of the table's length. Uh, the initial idea was to have the studio display sitting on top of it for added height, but after trying it out, I found that it was actually a little bit too high, so I put the studio display on the desk instead and slide the monitor stand over it to hide the base of the monitor for a cleaner look. The monitor stand also allows me to place the iPad stand at an appropriate height and I'm able to hide things like a tray of stationery or my keyboard and mouse underneath it when they're not in use. It has acrylic legs which gives the illusion of a floating shelf while keeping everything relatively minimal and clean. On the right of the studio display, I have an iPad stand. This one is from Hagibis? 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 I don't know, I'm sorry for butchering the pronunciation. It's both a stand and a docking station, so there are lots of ports that you can connect to your iPad Pro really easily without any more dongles. I'm using the 2018 iPad Pro 11 inch and it attaches magnetically onto the stand so you can orientate it easily. I usually leave it on portrait mode because it just looks better that way on the desk. The iPad Pro also connects to my MacBook Pro via sidecar so I can use it as an additional display uh, to preview my videos when I'm working on Premiere Pro. I usually leave my iPad playing Pomodoro music or just like lo-fi on YouTube while I'm working so it's really useful to be able to connect my keyboard and mouse to the iPad Pro so I can easily search for videos or to navigate using the mouse. I also have a kitchen timer which I use as a Pomodoro timer when I don't want to play YouTube videos for that. I have a random dock which charges my phone through MagSafe and also charges my AirPods Pro and Apple Watch magnetically. For my keyboard, I'm using one which is a collaboration between Keychron and Ken Design. I haven't been able to find any videos reviewing it and very limited websites actually talked about it. I chanced upon it while looking for mechanical keyboards on Taobao and found this one which perfectly suited the aesthetics I was going for. The design of this keyboard was inspired by a vintage record player from Braun called the SK4 and it mirrors its simple design, color scheme, wooden sides and acrylic covers. Basically, if you haven't already noticed, I just wanted wood texture with clear acrylic and white accents. So this keyboard is really perfect in fitting in with the entire theme. I'm not really a keyboard connoisseur, so I can't tell you for sure if this keyboard is great. Um, what I can tell you is I like the key travel and the fact that it's fully compatible with macOS. I picked the Gateron brown switches and I like the sound that it makes. It's sufficiently talky without the high-pitched click, which I hate. The keyboard is a 75% layout and it's also hot swappable which means I can always switch out the keys if I'm tired of the color scheme. You 
can use the keyboard with a USB-C wire or connect it wirelessly via Bluetooth. My mouse is the Apple mouse, I use it because that's what I'm used to using. It's still my go-to because I still prefer being able to use the gestures built into the Apple mouse. I also have a tray of stationery and knickknacks on my left under the monitor stand. Uh, these are things that I use on a daily basis and I like keeping them around but I don't want them to be visually messy. So things like tape measures, rulers, pens, lip balms, SD cards and scissors are here. The acrylic tray is from Muji but I'm sure you can find an alternative from any stationery store as well. On the far right of my desk is a tension rod shelf from a Japanese brand called Draw A Line. I first came across it when I visited Japan back in 2018. It comes in both black and white and it's fully modular so you can choose accessories like hooks, shelves and stand so that it fulfills your storage or display needs. I have a book stand which I use to put an iPad on it but I think for my current setup it's a little bit too far away from the monitor so I use an iPad stand instead. So right now I can put some notebooks or a magazine on it. On the shelf is a sleeper tag to-do list so I can keep track of what needs to be done for the day. On the top shelf I have an Everfresh tree because I like having a bit of greenery in the space and then I use the hook to store my bag and also my AirPods Max. Above the monitor are two oak shelves and I use them to display my cameras and lenses. I mainly use Sony cameras for my work but I picked up a Fujifilm X100V early last year before TikTok discovered it and I fell in love with it. So this year I picked up the Fujifilm X-T5 with the 23mm f1.4 lens and a 16-80mm f4 lens. I'm not fully convinced by this whole camera setup yet but watch out for a full review of the camera on this channel. I also have the first version of the Fujifilm X100 which I bought in 2010 when it was first released and also a small Sony ZV-1. On the topmost shelf are my lenses. I prefer shooting prime so most of my lenses are prime lenses but I do have a few zoom lenses with fixed apertures which are always useful when you shoot videos. So that's it for my desk tour. It is such a long video and I'm so grateful that you've stayed until the end. I've linked most of the items featured in this video in the description box below so do check it out if you like them as well. If you have any questions or would like me to do an in-depth review of anything you've seen in this video, drop me a comment below. Do help me out by hitting the like and subscribe button so the algorithm gods will push this video to more people who are interested in it. If you like content about fashion, beauty, tech and travel, do consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!